we all know that the 50mm is one of those classic lenses that everybody always wants to shoot with. Today we're putting two of them to the test. Yeah, so we have the venerable Sony FE 50mm 1.2 GM over here. And then we also have the much more affordable Sony FE 50mm 1.8 over here. And the question really is, is it worth it? Is it really worth spending that much more to get the 50mm 1.2 over the 50mm 1.8? So we came out here to the Oranjezicht city farm shot some pictures, show you guys what the difference is between these two lenses and whether the price is justified to go up to this bad boy over here. Now, if we look at the specs on these two lenses, the first and most obvious one is obviously the aperture difference. So we have the 50mm f1.8 and also the 1.2. Now, if you look at the numbers, I mean, there's not a huge difference between 1.2 and 1.8, mm -hmm. but in the photography world, uh, that does bring in a lot more light. And it's going to give you a much smoother background. But to add to the smoothness of the background, the blade construction on these two is also quite different. The 50mm f1.8 is only using seven blades, while on the 1.2, it's giving you 11 blades. So basically that is smoothing out your background and also giving you a much more pleasing and sort of rounded bouquet feeling, especially when we look at that image when we shot of you sitting on the bench there. Yeah, I mean, it's a substantial difference. Um, if you look at them in isolation, both are pleasing, both are good, looks nice, um, very nice and smooth defocus into the background and into the foreground. But yeah, when you put them side by side, the 1.2 is substantially better. Um, the fall off is, I would say, obviously sooner, so you don't have that same sort of depth in it. But the separation of subject and background is still there. And it's still really, really crisp in that separation. But then once you move into your defocused background area, the, the smoothness and the sort of like the, oh, I mean, I don't want to sound like a cliche, but the creaminess of that bokeh is phenomenal. And compared to the 1.8, it's a massive difference. It really is huge. Um, and that's a, that's a huge, huge difference between the two lenses right off the bat. Now we know that the f1.2 is obviously bringing in more light, but there's more to the lens that is going to give you much sharper image quality. And that's due to the lens elements and also the type of coatings they apply to the elements. Indeed. So the obvious thing is that this is a G Master lens. So this is sort of Sony's top of the range glass. And visually, if you look at the two images side by side, there's a huge difference in sharpness. Yeah, so we shot a nice portrait of you, um, kind of shooting through some... Um, some some vineyard uh, things. <laughs> what do you call it? <laughs> Shooting through some vines to get a little bit of defocus foreground into the into the shot. And yes, there is no two ways around it. The bigger, more expensive lens is significantly sharper. When you punch in specifically onto your right eye, which was um, sort of like the focus point, when you punch in there. I mean, you can count the pores and the eyelashes and yeah. it is incredibly sharp. It, it punches out at you. It really is phenomenal. Even, even the little photo you took of the, the dog here as well running yeah. on the farm, yeah. punching to the eye, it's just crisp. It's so much detail. You can count all the hairs on the eyes. Eh? Yeah. At the same time though, okay, if, we, if we're re realistic about it, okay, is it that big a difference? If you're just looking at the portrait without doing a 100 or 200% crop in on it, the 1.8 is really sharp. There's sort of other things that I find where the, the element construction and that brings in a little bit more for me. And, you know, that's when you start to look at how it does color and, mm. you know, that kind of thing. But in terms of the sharpness, I'm actually quite impressed with what the little 50 1.8 will deliver. In that same shot, I mean, even when you do punch in, if you're not looking at them side by side, you can still see all the detail there. Yep. That's really, really good. Is this one better though? Yeah, yeah, yeah it is, sure. obviously. No two ways around it. But in everyday usage, is it that much better? And I think that's, that's what we need to get to. 
I think then that will also probably tie in quite nice with our shot we did testing the chromatic aberration. Indeed. Because yeah. this is where the coatings in the lens is going to make a huge difference between these two. Mm. And we all know with digital uh, software editing these days, you can remove a lot of the lens aberrations, but you do get some purists out there that, that when you shoot a shot, you want it to be perfect. Mm -hmm. You don't want to mm -hmm. waste time editing images, especially if you have a thousand or two thousand images to edit. It's quite a sort of a timely process. Of course. Um, so this photo we shot sort of directly into the sunlight. Yeah. It was like yep. an, of a metal object. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the, the metal wiring, there's definitely way more chromatic aberration in the F1.8 model. Indeed. And that's where the coatings are going to stand out between these two. Yeah. Look, you get very clear purple fringing on it. Um, on both of them, actually, you do see some on the 1.2 image as well, um, but it is a lot more pronounced on the 50 mil 1.8. But again, is it that big a deal these days? You know, if you can throw it into Lightroom and just apply an auto fix and take most of that away, is it that big a deal? Probably not. And it's still very good performance from a very wide 50 yep. in terms of aperture width. Um, but again, is the 1.2 better? Yes. Yes, it is. Now, Simple as that. a curveball on the editing side of things. When we look at a, a shot where ghosting can possibly not be edited out or corrected with software, mm -hmm. that's where it's going to mess up your image. Yes. So our next shot is of the sort of wire, like chicken French wi mm -hmm. wire, again shot into the sun. And you, on the 50 mil 1.8, you just see this random green sort of ghosting across the whole of the image. And I think that is where it's a big problem. I mean, if you're shooting a wedding, for example, yeah. and there's massive ghost over someone's face, it's very difficult and almost impossible to edit that out. Indeed. I think any time where you shoot in a non-controlled environment, that's where going for a higher end lens is, is what's going to make the difference to you. Where you can't control the lighting, you can't necessarily control where people are standing, where and you know a specific event is taking place. You have no control over the lighting scenario. You need your equipment to be as good and as clinically correct as possible in those situations. And in that specific shot, as you very well demonstrated, substantial difference between these two lenses and that's 100 percent down to the construction the elements in there and the coatings on those lenses no two ways around it there is another thing between these two lenses that for me is a big big difference and that is the autofocus speed now we shot today on the sony a7r4 so good camera good autofocus it has all the fancy face detect and eye tracking and all of that kind of stuff in it but the 50 mil 1.8, the focusing is slow. Yeah, uh, it definitely gives me sort of the sort of PTSD times of autofocus with DSLRs. Yeah. Where um, it's like hunting in and, and yeah. in and out. And yeah. um, that's, that's just a waste of time these days, to be honest. Indeed, indeed. Um, again, not that the focusing is bad. Yeah. It's just compared to everything else that's available now, it's really, really slow and sluggish. And I get it. The lens is built to a price point, obviously. No two ways around it. It is built to a price point. So it uses that DC autofocus motor. And once it's there, once it's locked, it's fine. It's perfectly fine. It's there. It's just slow and it's noisy. Yeah, having four XD linear motors in the F1.2 makes it so much faster, it snaps quicker, yeah. and especially in video, it's going to be way smoother. Yeah, quieter as well. A much lot, quieter. A lot quieter. Um, and that is, that's big. Clear winner in the autofocus field right over here. Now, maybe jumping to manual focus, we mm -hmm. did a quick test now with focus breathing in video mode. And unfortunately, both of them has quite a big shift. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so we know some new digital mirrorless cameras do have some automatic correction in video mode with focus breathing. Um, the R4, not so much, but mm -hmm. uh, on both these lenses, focus breathing is definitely apparent there. Yeah. So jumping over to lens construction and 
sort of looking at the build quality of these two lenses there's again quite a big difference yeah obviously the 1.2 is catered to more professionals so you'll have a fully weather sealed lens with a rubber gasket on the back mount so that'll just ensure you that dust won't generally creep in at the back mm -hmm. you obviously have your quick focus uh, button here that you can manipulate for custom features and then also the aperture ring which is just a really nice little extra touch it and is. you can de-click the ring. Indeed. Right? Indeed. Yeah, and all of those things are just, just really nice to have. Now, the 50mm 1.8 does not have weather sealing. And it is, if you just touch it and feel it, it is a more affordable construction. No two ways around it. It doesn't have that same, that same heft to it. Now, the 1.2 is a heavy lens. Okay? It's just a simple fact. Um, and with good reason, it has more glass in it, it has all the weather sealing, it has bigger and better auto focusing motors in it, so it is going to be heavier. But for the price that you're paying to have the 50 mm 1.8, are you expecting weather sealing? No, no, definitely not. Are you expecting a dedicated aperture ring with de-clicking, with custom functions and that kind of thing? No, no, you are not you are trying to get as good an optical sort of product as you can at a very affordable price point. And that's always been where a 50mm 1.8 has really shown and really delivered its strength. Because it is such a simple construction in terms of the lens design and the optical layout, it is one of those lenses that pretty much every manufacturer out there has a really good one. Um, and this is no exception. The 50mm 1.8 from, from Sony is amazing at the price point. Mm. It's a phenomenal little lens. I think that kind of perfectly rounds to our conclusion of these two lenses. Because there's definitely two different people that might be looking at these two kind of lenses. Yep. I mean, everything we've mentioned about the f1.2 is going to cater for a professional. Someone that is a working professional that's in the industry that does not have time to waste with autofocus. They do not want time to waste with editing chromatic aberration. They want the sharpest, cleanest result mm. from their product because they want to deliver something to their clients that's on a certain sort of level. But looking at the F1.8, it's definitely perfect for the starter, a yeah. student, someone that is not a professional, someone that wants good quality, that wants an, a low f1.8 that wants to shoot some portraits maybe some product photography even though there are some sacrifices it's still really pretty solid lens yeah again at the price point it's a phenomenal little lens and this is not exclusive to sony okay whether you're looking at the canon 50mm 1.8 the nikon 50mm 1.8 they are all incredibly good lenses for what they cost you get so much lens for your money that 1.8 aperture is lovely for portrait shooting, um, even for product photography, anything like that. They are really, really good, good quality lenses. But if you can afford it, if you have that extra bit of money, or as you said, if you're a working professional and you're gonna be earning money from your photography or your video shooting, you really should be looking at the 1.2. That's plain and simple. It is sharper, it is faster, it is cleaner, and the bokeh is beautiful out of it. That'll be our video on our quick Sony 50mm test. We hope you guys enjoyed it. Let us know in the comments below which one you will be getting. Yeah, and as always, if you guys enjoy our content, please consider subscribing to our channel. It really helps us out a lot. And until next time, guys, cheers. Bye-bye.